So I think when we talk about well-being, it's not just about the concept of let me delay this and I'm going to get more later. And it's always looking at if I do this now, I'll get more later. But looking at the fact of keeping promises to yourself, because when you don't keep promises to yourself, so maybe you say, I'm going to study for this exam. And then that instant gratification starts creeping in. Those YouTube videos start looking a lot more appealing. It's not just about delaying the gratification. It's about keeping the promise to yourself. Because there are also studies that show that if you keep breaking promises to yourself, if you keep being flaky to yourself, that is not only going to lower your self-belief, it is also going to lower your trust in yourself. And we all know what it's like to lose trust for someone else, like lose trust within a relationship. Think about that happening to yourself time and time again. That can definitely take a toll on you, as well as it is going to lessen your ability to truly achieve things. And so when you think about it that way of it's not just about, oh, I'm going to get better later. It's about what is this going to do to my psyche and to my life quality if I keep breaking promises to myself and I keep deciding to not show up for myself at the end of each day. By the time your head hits the pillow, what makes you feel like it was a great day, right? And I think to sort of reverse engineer it from there is is really valuable. And that's something that, you know, I think a lot of us do. And it's something where, you know, for example, at the end of the day, what's sort of going on in your mind? What's what's that feedback loop telling you? Was it, man, you were distracted today. You didn't get much done. You spent three hours on social media. You didn't keep the promises you made to yourself, your colleagues, your clients. Uh, you didn't get that article written you should have. Whatever it is, right? All, all being that you know that if you would have focused in you would have gotten those things done. You would have kept those promises. And by the time your head hits that pillow, you're sound asleep. You're fast asleep. You're you're in this you're in this feeling or, or in this sort of world of man. What a day! That was good. I feel good about that. I kept the promises I I wanted to keep, and that I made to myself and others. And damn, that just feels good, right? And so when you're setting that up, it's like. What do you want that to be for yourself and for others around you? Do you want to be a trustworthy person? Do you want to have a lot of self-belief in yourself, right? Self-belief and self-esteem in a big way comes from your ability to keep promises to yourself and compound that consistently over time, right? So there's many projects we may work on throughout our lifetime. There's many things that we may be presented over a lifetime that if you've been doing the right things leading up to that point, more often than not doing the right things. I'm not saying you have to be, you know, hit 100% of your goals. That's impossible, right? If we're looking at some of the greatest, uh, you know, score of goals over time, right? We can look at Michael Scott, you know, uh, <laughs> Wayne Gretzky quote here. You miss 100%. <laughs> right, yeah, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. So as far as like setting this up for yourself, right, it, it's, there are things in our lives that every day pull for our attention, that every day seem like the most attractive thing, right? And that's because there are hundreds, if not thousands of engineers, the brightest minds that live around this world that are engineering these products to do this. They understand our cognitive abilities. They understand what makes us tick and what makes us distracted and what makes us sink into something without much regard for what it's going to do for the rest of our day or the rest of our week, right? And so understand and know or think about, right? I just encourage you to think about when your head hits that pillow tonight, what are the promises that you wanted to keep to yourself and others? What were those? Did you get them done? And if you didn't get them done, was it because a life event happened? Was it was cut because one of your children got sick at school? Or was it that if you check your screen time, you were on TikTok for four hours today? <laughs> because if it's the second one, you're you going to probably be feel- scrolling the PD TikTok <laughs> if that's yeah. hot, you're going you to your time on. on. <laughs> right. You better be on physique development TikTok, if, if anything. But um, 
you're gonna you're not gonna feel very good about that is essentially my point, right? There's there's different things. There's things within our control, there's things that aren't within our control. But when it comes to what we're talking about today, it's it's the controllables, right? Control the controllables. And one of those controllables is our ability to focus our attention on something that's important to us, or it's important to some us and to those around us, right? Those who trust within trust us and have trust within us, right? And that's that's the most important thing I think when it when it comes or one of the most important things when it comes to something like de delayed gratification. And I think with delayed gratification, it's important to not let this sit on an outcome. So, for example, when you are going through and and uh, using Sue as the example, where within her contest prep, she has a, a very definitive goal here to place better than she ever has, as well as uh, turn into an IFBB pro. Now, within that, um, let's say that she falls short of the ultimate goal. I don't think that you're going to be, I mean, you're going to be upset that you didn't reach the the goal, but at the same time, you have poured absolutely everything into this and, and have fallen in love with the work itself and, and will continue to do the work past this time and so on and so forth. Um, and so fall in love with the, the work that you're doing to create that delayed gratification and don't only let it hinge on that outcome being the case. Uh, because you could find yourself in a scenario where you get to a specific time frame that you feel as though that you should receive this delayed, delayed gratification that you've been working so hard towards. And the reality is, is that the timing may just not be right. And you just need to keep working and putting more time in those different factors. And that delayed gratification will come maybe six months or three months or whatever it or is. multiple years. Or years. Um, and so I think that the, the main thing is really ensuring that you're passionate about the thing that you're doing to um, find an environment that you're in love with what you're doing from a day-to-day -day perspective. Yeah. And I was going to talk on this because like I said, of real life doesn't have that guarantee. I could leave every stone unturned and do every single thing perfect for this prep and still someone else beat me. And I have to be okay with that. And I am okay with that going into the show, knowing that first, it's a subjective sport, but second, that it's not about just getting that end. It's not about just placing that. It's about what work went into it and those promises that I kept to myself and how I felt each day working towards that. If I fall on my freaking face for this prep, I don't care, truthfully, because I've learned about myself. I've been able to grow within this prep, and I've been able to show up for myself. And like Austin said, when that head hits the pillow, I feel great about the work that I did. And it is a very rewarding feeling in and of itself to just feel that way when I go to bed. Because there was a time in my life where I went to bed every night beating myself up, tearing myself down, so frustrated, irritated, annoyed, upset with how I spent the day. And being able to have my head hit that pillow and just feel good about what I did that day. And this is going to come in and strides and waves. It's not that every day I'm able to reflect on my day perfectly and have no bias and understand when I did enough, when I didn't do enough, when I showed up for myself. But more often than not, I'm able to get to the end of the day and say, Sue, you showed up, you kept your promises, and you did what you were supposed to do. And that's honestly enough for me, even if those things don't come to fruition, if I don't get that bigger reward down the road down the road, that is enough reward for me because it goes towards exactly what Austin said, that self-confidence, that self-belief, that self-esteem. And that is what can keep me going and keep pushing me in the right direction instead of going to bed every night feeling so defeated about how I spent my life. Life is something that you only get one of, and it's pretty dang short when you really look at it. And so being in a place where you spend your life full of regret versus you can either have the pain of regret or the pain of discipline. And I'd much rather have that pain of discipline, that pain of working my tail off and going to bed feeling proud than getting in bed every night because I chose the instant time and time again.